Hi there, welcome back. Today we're talking about patient research. If you are new to clinical or have not been practicing for a while, this is a beginner's introduction to gathering relevant information so that you can safely care for your first patient. So when you're conducting patient research, we're really looking for three key areas of information to gather. The first is what I will call demographic data. We're looking for the patient's name, their age and gender, and where can I find them? What room are they in? In addition, we're gonna be looking for allergies and their code status. That is a critical piece of information to have should you walk into that room and your patient not be responsive. The second category is their medical information. So what's their reason for admission? What is their past medical history and their medications? And I like to also look at their PRN medications, their ones that they get as needed, so I know how I can intervene should again I walk in to a situation that is not controlled. Lastly, these, the last group of information we're looking for is patient-specific care goals, our head-to-toe guidelines. So I need to know in terms of mobility, diet, elimination, now you may be looking at several areas in a patient's binder to gather the information you need. This is a pretend patient and we'll just look at some of the documents that I will be using to fill out my patient research form. Mr. Manor here, I've got my physician orders, he's a new admission, so I can find a great deal of information on this page. I have his diagnosis, his past medical history, and I've got a whole list of interventions which is going to help me plan my day. If you don't have access to the admitting orders, that may be because your patient's binder has been thinned out, which means they've just removed some of the bulk. So you're going to have to be more creative as to where you're going to find that information. Another form, because this patient has diabetes, is we have a blood glucose record, and this will help give me a sense of where his sugars have been and how we are managing them. If your facility has a wound document, you can locate that information, and it will give you great insight into the wound itself and the dressing requirements. And then there'll be documents such as diagnostics, lab results, x-rays, consults, that will also be part of your gathering information. In the consult, sometimes you'll find past medical history. In the progress notes of various other professionals, you will find past medical history. Use all of your resources within that binder to locate the general information you need to start caring for your patients safely. All right, so we are at the free download portion. I have created for you a template that you can use in any work environment. Download this and you can modify it. It is a Word document to fit your workplace. It is created with a medicine or surgical floor in mind, but as you progress through your practice, you will find that you're modifying this to fit your needs. So looking at the demographic data, I can see Mr. Manor is a 74-year-old male. He is in room 210, bed 3. He's a full code admitted March 6th and has no isolation precautions and no allergies. I have an admission diagnosis of urosepsis, which takes me into my medical data. I gathered from the physician's orders a medical history of osteoarthritis, insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus, and atrial fibrillation, in addition to his surgery. I was also able to gather the medications off of the physician orders, which would also be documented in the patient's medication administration record. The system data is more of a circle slash checklist. So for CNS, I don't necessarily know if he's alert to name, place, and date, but if I were to look back into the past nursing document, I may find that information. I also know from looking at the previous medication administration that he has an abdominal pain. It was 6 out of 10, and he received Tylenol at 6 o'clock in the morning, the effect of which I'm not sure of. I can then just circle the mobility that fits this patient. It saves time in writing. And then you would fill out the rest of your systems in the same manner. Looking at cardiovascular, he does have an IV, normal saline running at 100 millimeter, milliliters per hour. I know he has that abdominal dressing. And from my wound chart, I get some information about the type of dressing and what the wound looks like should I need to do that dressing. 
With the vital signs, the history or the trend, it is important to look at their vital sign record to identify what their normal ranges are. So for example, we'll say Mr. Manor usually sits between 140 and 150 systolic over 70s diastolic. This will help you in assessing whether he is in a crisis or if he is in his normal range. If you were to do a vital signs on Mr. Manor and his blood pressure were to be 148 systolic, you would recognize he's in his normal range and not panic as to him being hypertensive at that moment. In the respiratory system, we can find our parameters if there are orders to keep SATs over 92. Sometimes in our COPD patients, there'll be SATs greater than 88. This is an important piece to note. And then what interventions you have available. The GI system, for us, Mr. Manor is as tolerated, but we have him fluid restricted at 1.5 liters. And his last bowel movement, I have that highlighted in red because I want you to check that information. And then for the other stuff that's not relevant, you can just draw dashes through. As I said, as you continue to work with this document, you will remove the pieces that do not fit on your floor and you will add extra components that make more sense for you. Now in the right hand column, I have an appointment slash result section. I like to get into the practice of keeping track of their lab work, for example, and I like to do things by system as well in this section. So let's just imagine we're gonna send him for a chest x-ray. I just put that up top because it's an appointment. In the cardiovascular system, I would look for elements of the blood work such as red blood cells, hemoglobin, white blood cells, and the breakdown of same. In the respiratory system, you may find that you have an arterial blood gas to look at. The GI system is all your electrolytes, your liver profile. And in the GU system, we're looking at your analysis, cultures, etc. So if you get in the practice of putting the lab results in the system in which they are most relevant to, when you go to give your report to nurses or to physicians, you will have a complete picture of your patient status. Well, that's it for me for today. Thanks for sticking with me. Don't forget to subscribe down below so you'll get the next video when it is released. Have a great day.